I'm near the summit of Cairn Gore, I'm a thousand metres up, and it's proper cold up here. I couldn't possibly live without some very specialist kit, and yet there's a small, quite insignificant bird that's so superbly designed it can live up here in comfort. It's the ptarmigan. Britain's smallest grouse is super tough. It's found in some of the most extreme Arctic environments right across the Northern Hemisphere, from Siberia to Alaska. If a ptarmigan, not much bigger than a small chicken, can endure these harsh conditions, I'd like at least to try to do the same. I suspect living like one might be a bit more tricky than I imagine. Finding ptarmigan here on Cairngorm turns out to be surprisingly easy. Oh, there's three of them. Three of them. And pure, pure white against the snow. Look at that. I never thought they'd let me get this close. Ah, now that's the male, and he's got a really jet black eye stripe. He looks very, very handsome. Now, this is a bird that can survive temperatures down to minus 35 Celsius. So today, it's a walk in the park. But the question is, how do they do it? So what do you think here, Keith? To find out, I've teamed up with Keith Miller, a local ecologist and mountain guide. He's going to help me understand a bit more about the ptarmigan's way of life. The Cairngorms have the highest ever recorded wind speeds and coldest temperatures of anywhere in the UK. If I'm to stay out here overnight, like a ptarmigan, then I'm going to need a place to shelter. Once you got through the surface, you'll actually find it will go in God, quite nicely. It's quite tough, isn't it? It is. I'm guessing you've done this before, Keith. Uh, the old time. <laughs> Very nice. And this is going to be softer to dig. Oh, so it is. Clearly, I'm not designed for life up here. Oops. One minute I'm freezing cold, the next I'm boiling. Ptarmigan, on the other hand, have ingenious solutions to these extremes. The snow-white feathers that provide their camouflage cover the entire bird, all the way down to their feet. Feathers also cover their nostrils and even their eyelids. They're perfectly adapted to their Arctic environment. What I love about this is this snow holes, maybe two or three hours work for Keith and I. But for the ptarmigan, they do a very similar thing. But all they do, they just come down, make a little shallow scrape in the snow, sit there and allow the snow to blow down and drift over them. And they make their own cosy snow hole in that way. Not with three or four hours work. I better get on with it. Here we go. Let's come into our cosy little snow hole. And four hours later, we have home. So here I am in my snow hole, just like a ptarmigan. Except, of course, it's not like a ptarmigan. Because I, or you, need a whole host of things to help us survive. The ptarmigan needs none of this. But it does one other very clever thing. Before it goes to bed, it kind of carb loads. It fills its crop with all sorts of vegetable matter, and through the night, it slowly digests that. And that acts like a kind of internal central heating system, keeping it warm. Very clever. Hmm. Actually, very good. Eat like a ptarmigan, live like a ptarmigan. But just as I was getting used to ptarmigan life, disaster. This is 
Uh oh, that doesn't look terribly good. So when, you, when you've got a sort of uh, potential melt, it's not a good place to be. The snow was melting oh and our roof threatening to cave in. Yeah, All that work for yeah. nothing. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Wind. It's now a two-hour slog downhill. The mountain had beaten us. But it's really interesting to discover firsthand just how difficult it is for us humans to do the things a little bird can do so effortlessly.